It's been said, we are wise by other people's experience. And aren't we enriched by what our guests share with us here every day? Paul and Eleanor Henderson have been, I, I call them career mentors, pouring wisdom and spiritual encouragement into the business world, uh, to married couples at conferences across the country. Eleanor's been involved in women's ministries and pastoral care. Uh, Paul's a motivational speaker. It, it's our turn today as we get to catch up with the Hendersons. Uh, do I need to say, yes, this is the Paul Henderson who played professional hockey for 18 years and is best remembered for scoring the goal of the century in the first Canada-Russia series, 1972. Welcome, folks. Thank you. And I love to remember, because I've heard you tell this, Paul, you actually tried to skate as far away from that slice of history as you could at one point. Why? Well, it got, uh, it got a little overwhelming, I think, after a while, right after the season or after the series. And we certainly weren't Christians back then. And uh, I don't think I handled it all that well. And so I think going to Birmingham, uh, Alabama to play for the Birmingham Bulls uh, was just a, a wonderful, refreshing time. But then I woke up to the fact that's the only thing I ever did significantly in my, wife, in my life, so we better come back to Canada. There was a Freudian slip. Yes. Hear him say wife? Yes. yes. <laughs> Were you married at that time? Of course. Yes. Yes. You went yes. I was in Russia there for the series, so it was a great, awesome time. And Yes. Children and grandchildren, give us the numbers. Three daughters. And I like to say three sons now, so, and seven grandchildren. Actually, we have eight. Now we have the grandchild, granddaughter in law. So our oldest grandson is married. So we're into the next generation of families. So this is it's, wonderful. It's awesome. A little bit scattered. Yes. In the US. Uh, two daughters in, uh, in the States, and then the five grandchildren, and then three here. Now, many people know you both because they have attended one of a variety of events focusing on marriages. Um, what, what turned you in that direction? I mean, you're passionate about building strong marriages. Well, it actually happened accidentally. We had a couple that were really struggling and we just couldn't help them anymore. And so we suggested they go to a, a marriage conference. And uh, the only way they would go is we went with them. And so we went and I, I mean, I was blown away by how much I learned and I said to Eleanor, we're going back next year as a refresher because, I mean, communication skills, resolving conflict. Uh, I, I mean, it was incredible what we learned. Well, we went back the next year and we're sitting in there and it was just men did all the speaking. And I looked at Ellen and I said, you know what's wrong with this? They need couples up there. We should be doing this. Well, at this point, she had done no public speaking. She looked at me and she said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> and I stepped on her, for, I, I kept on her for two years. Nora, I know, I really think that God could use us in this area. And so she just got sick and tired of saying no and started, okay, I'll try it. And uh, so we've been speaking now for 15 years. And you know what really irritates me? She's become a better public speaker than I am. Oh, He's being a little facetious a there. <laughs> wow. We, I think, too, Mar, going back, our background, especially in my family, marriage and family were really important as a child growing up, and I, I could see a strong, I grew out of a, you know, in a strong family, a parents of committed to one another, loving one another, and there for each other, and so I think that was deeply instilled in my heart, and I always had that passion for family, for marriage, and how key it is, and especially as you started, we, I looking around, seeing marriage was not in a good state. It's, it's, we're losing the battle, as mm -hmm. I used to say back then. And so I think that was part of the uh, really realizing now, we do have a platform now where we could impact and help marriages to have a solid foundation and thus have a great family. And you have, you've got a lovely background, Eleanor, rural, a farm, farm yes. life. And yes. you've got all those domestic skills. You could write the book on homemaking. Mm -hmm. And you see how I separate that? Home no, making, because you actually have to make a home. home. It doesn't just no happen by having this building and people in it. And uh, just the life skills alone are being lost. Exactly, they? exactly. And over the years of journeying, another book I think that needs to be written, Mark, is the one on how to be a good in-law. Because during, mm. over the years of uh, doing the conferences and talking to young couples about what parents are doing to marriages today, you know, that leave and cleave is not being practiced. Mm. And so that's another key area of a One marriage of that needs issues. to happen. Yes. Paul, what would you add in terms of a perspective on the crisis of 
marriages today? Well, I think that all of us go through tough times. Like we, we were married for 12 years before we became Christians. And then we were married 25 years before we went to a marriage conference to find out the really the biblical perspective. And I, as much as we were Christians and we knew the Bible had to say some things about it, but it wasn't until we went and we understood what God really said about marriage and how to build a, a great uh, marriage. And so we learned so much from that and it, it took our marriage to totally a, a new level. Trial and error is a brutal way to learn marriage. <laughs> and we did that for 25 years. And there was a, I don't care who you're married to, there's tough days, but we worked through it. But now we were so confident in the material that we were teaching, we knew that it worked as long as you apply it. And I mean, it's, it's pretty basic really. It's just uh, love the other person unconditionally. And neither one of us are perfect people, but you know, we're to the point where we just laugh at each other. The things that used to irritate uh, about each other now, man, we're just glad we've got each other after all these it's, years. And so, yeah. but it's daily working at it and it's being, uh, and, and making it exciting too and doing things together. And I always say to Eleanor, as long as I got her, I, I don't need much else in this world. So we have built a wonderful relationship, but I will tell you one thing more. I have learned more from her uh, than any other person. I mean, she's taught me more by accident in terms of being gracious and forgiving and all those type of things. And so I have learned much from her, but of course, I think we said, I think we've read something like 120 books on marriage and relationships. So we've educated ourselves. We've gone out there, okay, what, you know, what are some of the, uh, the, the wise, wise counselors, what are they saying about it? And so we've read a lot of that material and obviously applied it to, to our marriage. Well, for sure, and, and having this continuing platform as marriage mentors, <laughs> um, you've kind of been a bit of a fishbowl, you, but I'm sure it's been joy. It's been a joy to grow together. How many years married? 47. 47. Now we've got people watching, they're wondering, what are you waiting for, girl? Um, you were here, Paul, to tell us that last November you had a devastating diagnosis of cancer. And um, at the time, no symptoms, which was amazing. I wonder if this has come as uh, the biggest challenge of your marriage. Eleanor. Yes, it has, because I never thought, see, Paul's family has always had heart problems, artery problems, cholesterol, and so, which Paul had a stint put in in, in 04. And so I thought, because my family's cancer, Paul's family's heart, so it really blindsided me. I said, Paul, you're not supposed to have cancer. It's supposed to be the other side of my family, my side. So yes, to me, it was a really, really a shock. Never even entered my mind that mm -hmm. Paul would, uh, I was just confident that, and also confident that his family, his father had died in his late 40s and his uncles and his grandfathers, that we had reached into the 60s. And so Paul, we had, we had this hard home thing. Free. Yes, we're <laughs> home free. So obviously I had become a little displacent maybe or too confident in that we're mm. home free and God had to bring another challenge into our lives to mm. say, okay, what are you gonna do with this one? Who are you gonna rely on? So yes, it was a, a challenge. Paul, remind us what that news was for those hearing it for the well, first time. Well, it, it was really, I was really surprised because I, like I work out, we've eaten well for years and so I was really blindsided by the whole thing. But the thing that amazes me more was the, was the lack of fear, the flank, lack of angst. And uh, like, I didn't know if I had a month to live. You know, you hear people finding out you have it. And, and it was invasive. I, it was in my stomach and my chest and in my lymph nodes, it's in my blood. I have lymphocytic uh, uh, lymphoma, chronic leukemia. 